All right, cryptic quiz. So we have three questions. What is the opposite of a professional eater? How would you describe a job in the Acme Mitten Company shipping department? And number three, what can be right but never wrong? So what we're going to do is for each exercise, find the missing link refer to the diagram at the right. So they are telling us that all these links are our A, B, and C sides for a right triangle. And we are going to round our answer to the nearest tenth if necessary. So some of these answers may be whole numbers. And find it in the code. Each time the answer appears, write the letter of the exercise above it. So that means that if the six, right, appears lots of different times, you're going to write that letter in that spot every time it happens. It doesn't matter the question. It's not separated by one, two, or three. It's whenever that letter appears, you write, or that number appears, you write that letter. So in this case, because um, the spacing is so tight here. I would recommend getting a lined piece of paper so you can keep your work neat. And if it helps, you can draw a right angle every time and then label your A, B, and C that they give you. Or you can just use the formula and do plug and chug every time. Completely your call. I will give you credit either way as long as you show me the work. So let's get started. We're going to start um, with a very simple, you need to know the formula. If it's a right triangle and we are finding a missing link, then we need a squared plus b squared, ooh, that's a big plus sign, equals c squared. Good old Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's look at what we have here. I'll do the first one. A equals 9, B equals 4, C equals a blank. That means this is our X right here, right? If we don't know what it is, that's our X. So we can go ahead. I'm going to do the work over here on the side. A is 9. So we have 9 squared plus B is 4. So we have 4 squared equals, and we don't know C, so that's going to be X squared. Now please notice, you know, some of them have C being X, but it can change. Like here, your A is X, and then you have some with B being X. So you got to make sure you know where the X is going each time you do a new problem. So 9 squared, 81. If you don't have these squares memorized, that's okay. You can use the squared button on your calculator. It's, I think, two buttons above the 8 key. And then 4 squared is 16. And that's a funky looking 6 there. Equals x squared. Luckily, in this case, since c is x, it's already by itself. So once we get our exponents, our squares taken care of, then we can just add them together. So 81 plus 16, let's take out our handy dandy calculator, and we have 81 plus 16 equals 97. So we have 97 equals x squared. Now, to get rid of a square, remember, you must do the square root. That's above the 9 key. The square root undoes the square to get x by itself. We don't want to know, technically, we don't want to know what c squared is, right? Because that's what we would be finding, the area of this imaginary square over here. We don't want to know that. We want to know just this side length, just this part of it. So we're going to do square root. Cancel those out. Square root. So once you square both sides, or square root, excuse me, square root both sides, now we have x by itself, I think, and uh, equals 97, not a perfect square. So we're going to come and get our calculator again. 
and we have 97, and we're going to square root it, again, above the 9 key, and we get an irrational number, something that goes on forever, never ends. It's a decimal, right? So 9.848 keeps on going. Remember, our directions, and it's already boxed in for us. Well, oh, I need to update, don't I? Okay, uh, we need to round to the nearest tenth. So we come down here, tenth is your dime spot, if you're thinking money, like if this was just $9.84, dimes are 10. So we look here and we look one behind it. That four is not gonna do anything to that eight. So our answer is going to be 9.8. So we come back up here and we have 9.8. And that's what C is, C is 9.8. And you can write your answer right there. You must show me work either on, well, on the back of this paper or on a separate paper, but you may put your answer right there. Now, if we scroll up, the ink's gonna go with me, but if we scroll up to the top here, remember we're looking for 9.8. And let's see if I can find it, 9.8, oh, there it is, okay. So, if we go back down here, 9.8 was technically our uh, answer for H. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna put H where I see 9.8, and I see one right there, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna write an H here. And you need to check all three questions because this 9.8 could go anywhere. So I'm gonna erase some of this stuff here. Let's get rid of this, see if I can see any other 9.8s. Nope, I don't see any on this, that's a 9.2, but that doesn't help us. And I don't see, oh, that's 8.8, nope. I don't see any more. So I think that's going to be it for our H's. All right, so let's clear this out. Actually, let's just clear the screen out. So we know H goes right there. All right, so we come back down here. Let's pick another one. Here, let's do A. A is right here. Again, you do all these the same, so it doesn't matter which ones I do for you. Once I get the hang of it, it's pretty simple. Um, it's not hard. It takes time. You have to do work, but it's not hard work. So let's do A, and then I'll call it a day for this worksheet. A equals 2. B equals some number and C equals nine. So in this case, our B is going to be X, right? That's what we don't know. You may draw a triangle and label it two for A, X for B, and nine for C. And we know that that's C because it's directly across from our right angle. And the fact they tell us, which is always a bonus. So we have A squared, which is gonna be two squared, plus, we don't know B, so that's your X squared, equals C, which is nine squared. So two squared is four. We don't know our X squared, so we're gonna leave that there. And nine squared is 81. Remember, whenever you have something on the same side as x, you have to get rid of that first. You cannot find the square root having this plus sign in the middle. So to get rid of a positive four, let's change our colors. To get rid of a positive four, we must subtract four on both sides of our equal sign. That's the real point of drawing this line, to make sure you do it on both sides and not the same side. So those fours go away. We have x squared by itself. Let's go back to our other color. And 81 minus four. Let's get our calculator out here. Move it over here this time, clear this out. 81 minus four, 77. Now, if you guys don't know, I know 77 is not a perfect square. Can you tell me what numbers it's in between? What's in between 77? Let's see. Um, nine times nine is 81. Eight times eight is 64. So our answer should be between eight and nine. Let's make sure we got this. To undo the square, 
we find the square root right there and we do that to both sides just like you subtracted the 4 on both sides you got to do the square root on both sides now we have x by itself you see how much room this has taken that's why I said another sheet of paper is a good idea and we have the square root of 77 so we square root it and we get yep an irrational number see it's between 8 and it's bigger than 8 it's close to 9 but not quite and remember we said we had to round to the nearest tenth so we go to our tens place we see a seven and we look behind it uh-oh we have another seven what is the seven gonna do do you remember five and above give it a shove very good we're gonna shove this guy up so it's not gonna be 8.7 it's going to be 8.7 8 very good it just goes up one the whole number doesn't change just this guy right here so 8.8 .8 is going to be our answer so we're gonna write down and you see none of these have labels so just writing the number without like inches or centimeters or whatever is fine so and you can also write it here in the blank 8.8 .8. And we want to go wherever we see an 8.8, .8 and we want to write the letter A. So let's go back up here. Wherever I see an 8.8. .8. Oh, I see a couple ones. Okay, so we're going to write the letter A because back down here where we did our work, A was, you know, 8.8 .8 is the answer for A. That's where we got that from. All right, 8.8 .8 right here, so I'm going to write an A. And then I got another one here. Ooh, and another one there. A is very popular. I guess that's why they always guess it on Wheel of Fortune, right? A is always like one of those, I want to buy a vowel. We don't have any for number two. And here's one on number three. And here's another one. Okay, so it looks like we have five A's out of one problem. Not too shabby. And that's what you do for you know the whole worksheet is you just do the Pythagorean theorem for each one plug and chug away and then write your letters at the top now if you get some nonsense word or words that don't make sense that's how you know maybe I need to go back and check my my math on the Pythagorean theorem formula because something got messed up this is called a self-check worksheet if you have any other questions please ask your teacher